Hello friends, welcome back. So we took a overview of the brain in the prior video presentation. So let's continue further and dive deep into the brain and see what the middle region of the brain does. So within the middle region of the cerebrum, um, there are spaces called ventricles, which we have heard while studying the cardiology, right? And I'll show you the picture that will make more sense. So, in the middle region of the cerebrum, that is the large jet portion that we have in the brain, that is cerebrum. So, in that cerebrum, in the middle region, we have what we call ventricles. And they contain watery fluid um, that is out there in, throughout in the brain and around the spinal cord. That is called cerebrospinal fluid. What it does, it is needed to protect the brain and the spinal cord um, from shock as might a cushion. And uh, it contains lymphocytes, sugar, it provides some protein. And when a spinal fluid um, can be used um, through the procedure called spinal puncture or, or lumbar puncture for the diagnose or to relieve the pressure on the brain and hydrocephalus and all that we will get into those details. So a hollow needle is inserted in the lumbar region of the spinal column below the region where the nervous tissue of the spinal cord ends and fluid is withdrawn. So this is actually the ventricle, but when we magnify, there you go. So it reveals the different aspects of the ventricles. Yet another view from a different perspective. So you have anterior view, you have uh, all the ventricles here. And that is right in the middle region of the cerebrum. Yet another view. So you have a cerebrum. In the cerebrum, you have a ventric ventricular system, right? And below down goes our spinal cord. Remember the outer portion is the cortex. Here you have the in the ventricle you have the cerebrospinal fluid, okay, and brainstem will get into those details, but that is another part of the brain. So let's stick to the cerebrospinal fluid. So it has certain components as I was referring to before. It contains glucose, protein, chloride, and depending upon the number of cells, lymphocytes and all that. So you can imagine what functions the cerebrospinal fluid does. It protects, lubricates the brain, it provides nutrients, removes waste, so on and so forth. Okay. And it serves as a transport medium for the nutrients and the metabolites, endocrine substances and even neurotransmitters. So Teamwork is inherent in anything and everything when we look at our own body. Just like underwriters and the field partners and the customers. Um, this is the view of how the, the sample of the fluid can be taken out through a needle. And of course that's the cerebrospinal fluid and yet another view and it can be used for the diagnosis and for the studies. Uh, you could have a normal, abnormal pressure as well. Brain and the spinal cord. Okay, so I am intentionally breaking down into small pieces so that you can have a time to digest and move forward. Okay, I will see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.